Hi, everybody. My name is uh, John Boyd. I'm with the communications team for the Transportation Alliance. Um, today, we're going to be uh, talking about uh, KPIs, key performance indicators, using uh, the metrics the metrics you already have uh, to streamline and enhance your operations. And we're very lucky to be joined by Natalie Para, uh, excuse me, Natalie George, excuse me, um, uh, uh, from ZTrip. Uh, a few housekeeping items just before we get started. Please join the conversation at any time by unmuting yourself or by using the chat feature. We um, also encourage you to turn on your camera to join the discussion and to make it um, interactive. Uh, and um, we will be monitoring uh, any questions sent to us, um, either to the whole group or via direct message, and then we can uh, we can give those to our presenter, Natalie. Um, and finally, this webinar is being recorded. And with that, a warm welcome to Natalie, and I will hand it over to her to start our discussion on KPIs. All right, thanks, John. I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen. And then it made the screen very small. All right, can you all see my screen? All right, yep. so we're going to talk about um, KPIs and how we use them and how you can use them yourself. Let me see. Now I don't know how to go to the next screen. Uh, Natalie, try the either the uh, right hand arrow or the space bar. Try that. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, I think it worked. There we go. Great. So, why is data important for your your business and how you run your business? Um, we are all human, um, and humans um, inherently lead with emotion. Um, the stat is two thirds, um, or up in up to like eighty eight percent. They say of of leaders lead with emotion. I probably am 120%. Um, and sometimes we need to make decisions um, financially for our companies um, or, or just to move our companies forward with data instead of um, what we think might happen. Um, we also on our team use data to be, and we're very transparent. So if you have goals for your your team or your staff, um, it's nice that they can see where they are in, in any point of something they need to be doing or, or why we are making um, business decisions um, instead of just saying, you know, I want to do this and we're constantly telling no, they have something or a goal that they can look forward to. So we'll go over some of uh, the data that we use uh, on all of our, and all of our KPIs. So the first thing that we um, did after we started building the dashboards is we needed some place to kind of host it all. And I'm assuming that all of you um, get several emails a day with a spreadsheet um, that, you know, from your dispatch software, from maybe your cashiering platform, from your um, accounts receivable. And so you need to be able to put those all together um, so that you're not, you're kind of looking at an overall feel. So we built a website and it's Zmetrics. Um, and these are the things that we track. We actually have some more things on there, but these are the things we, we want to look at at any given time, our driver balances, our revenue, what are our, our applicant leads look like, um, driver incidences, um, our booking report summary. I know that most uh, dispatch software platforms have a booking uh, summary report, but we really kind of wanted to look at it from our own standpoint, not just what um, the dispatch software that you have gives out, um, accounts receivable, um, a maintenance report, and then just generic driver information on each one of your drivers. So revenue. Um, this one's probably the most important for you all to kind of look at because you want to make sure that you're moving in the right direction. Um, so what we look at is what is, we look at daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and then yearly. Um, what is our, and then, and what is our collected versus what our targeted is. So each year we have a budget. 
Um, and, you know, a manager will go through that budget and, and then we kind of always are leaning to try to hit that number um, so that we can see where we are. So if we look on like the top uh, right of the screen, the total versus target, um, that would be a KPI we looked at. This is what we collected and this is what um, was billed for the drivers. That's what, how we look at revenue is, is our lease um, um, revenue that we collect or if we um, are billing a customer like in, in we have a, a, a point time where this week we had budgeted to hit, you know, $10,000 that week in, in rides, um, did we hit that number? Um, and then for us, we do a lot of lease, leasing. Um, so we look at the revenue that we charge to the driver and how much we collected. There's a lot on independent contractors. There's a lot of um, carryover, carrybacks for the drivers. And so we wanna make sure that their balances don't get too out of whack. And you could use that with, with accounts too. So what did we bill out and then what did we collect? Um, and then that tells us, hey, we're doing a great job. Our revenue is growing and growing and growing. Uh, and that means that we can start to add vehicles and maybe promote more or and move forward instead of we need to sell off some um, vehicles or maybe let, let uh, an employee go based on our numbers. Accounts receivable, all of these numbers are uh, skewed. Um, I don't, our data analytics guy, I don't know what he did, but did some multiplication and then subtraction and then addition, I'm not sure. But accounts receivable, um, so what are you, uh, billing out? Who should you stop billing um, with? Sometimes we get into a contract and we are so excited that we landed something and then, then they don't pay. Um, so are they a good client? Um, and we can look at, so in our market, we are, you know, in 26 cities. So we look at accounts receivable by location. So is that billing person in, in that billing department in that location doing their job? Um, and then we also look at accounts receivable by customers, um, our total invoice amount by um, versus the accounts receivable amount. We then also track what is a high risk customer. And then we can also go in and see, okay, someone we were billing, we were collecting on, now we're no longer collecting on, did we lose that customer so that we can go back out and uh, remarket to them? Or maybe, especially during COVID, did they lose that employee? And that was our main point of contact. So we need to reach back out to that company and try to find out, um, you know, was it something we did or is, did we just lose the contact? And we need to, you know, find the, who the new contact is. Uh, driver balance, again, for us, this is important. We have all independent contractors. Um, so, we, we track ours by city balance um, because we have 26 locations. What is our weekly average of our driver balances versus what was it last week? Are we going in the right direction? And then our total balances over, over any given time. And then we can look at a ba driver balance that has someone, you know, are they consistently high? Um, and are we able to coach them to bring that balance down? Um, you know, a lot of the times as um, companies, we have a driver that we see has um, great safety record, great customer service, um, but ha never pays us. Um, and then, you know, really after we're paying the insurance, paying the lease on the building, we're paying the, the vehicle um, uh, amount and they're not paying us, why, why do we keep them? That's where the data really takes the emotion out of what we do. Um, and all of these are, are, you can even drill down to how long they've been driving with us and, um, and so forth. Uh, driver info, this one's probably the most important and can be tied to either independent contractors or employee drivers. 
Um, so how long have, um, once you onboard an employee or a driver, uh, independent contract driver, how long are we keeping them? Um, and then what did we do differently with that driver? So what is your retention rate? How long have they been driving um, in terms of, of length of um, onboarding, contracting or employed? Um, what is their driver rating? Are, do they have a good driver rating or they have bad customer service? Um, how long do they drive when they drive? Um, what is their completion rate? What is their cancellation rate? What is their rejection rate? Um, on ours, a driver can accept a trip in the future. Did they complete that accepted trip or did they end up canceling right before? Um, so what is their at advanced booking cancellation rate. Um, what is, um, is, what is, I mean, there's so much more. What is their safety score um, is something we look at. What is their, um, their customer service score? Do they, um, do they move your company forward or are they someone that's always in your office telling you they're not making any money, um, but then they have a really high rejection rate. So that is another very important KPI that we look at. Driver incidences. Um, one of the things that um, is very important is um, safety. Um, and it, you know, if you can save um, any money on claims, that is right towards the bottom line. So how safe are your drivers? So in our systems, we use two different cameras um, and we use Fleet View and we use uh, Nato. So both of those systems give you um, incidents that happen, but then now we can go in and look over a driver over a period of time um, and see what kind of a driver are they? How many accidents has your total fleet had? Um, what was your um, accidents a year ago versus um, today? What was your accidents um, last week versus this week? Um, are your accidents happening because of speeding, distracted driving? Um, sometimes if you have a camera system, they're triggered by a pothole or a large um, slam of the door. So you wanna take that out of consideration. Um, which vehicles um, are acting more safe? If you have, you know, maybe, maybe you have a, if you have employee drivers, maybe you have a, Cadillac versus the Audi and the Audi for some reason has more unsafe acts. Is there something in there that's distracting the driver um, that you could use to um, train or coach a driver so that that way you can take that safety feature out? Um, is there tablet um, or dispatch software in a, in a different location? Um, so those are kind of all the things that we go through on safety and driver incidents. Um, and then we also look at what time of the day are we having more accidents? Um, what is the cost associated with that accident? So I mean, we, we drill down on this one pretty deep. Um, we look at the average age of the, um, the driver that's having the most number of accidents. We've gone in and we've looked at zodiac signs um, to try to see if, if a cancer is more likely to have an accident over a Scorpio. We've not found anything yet, but uh, the, I mean, like sometimes when you're looking at data, you're, you try to find, find anomalies and sometimes it's throwing a needle in a haystack. Maintenance reports. So um, this one is also very important. You want to, we, I just had a meeting yesterday where I met with some other um, fleet owners. And one of the, how we look at maintenance is we have um, one mechanic per 
um, about 45 vehicles and he had double of that. And he said, how do I know that I'm, you know, that sounds, sounds low and everybody else in the room that was in the room with us said that they had about the same number of mechanics uh, per car. And this fleet operator had, um, like I said, double for the same number of um, vehicles. And this, you know, how do I know if I'm getting my value out of my mechanic? Um, so that was something that kind of opened his eyes when we talked about it. Talks about, so for us, we use RTA as a maintenance software, um, but any software will be able to pull some of the information in. Um, so how many hours are they spending on oil changes? How many hours are they spending on large repairs like an engine or a transmission? How many days um, past due are you uh, on scheduled maintenance? So if you have vehicles, you can look very fast and say, hey, I've got 20 vehicles that are uh, due preventative maintenance. Um, and, and this is what's due next week. So you can um, decide whether or not you need to order parts, not order parts, um, what is the downtime on that? Um, and what vehicles, um, we have several different types of vehicles in our fleets, what vehicles um, have a better ratio on maintenance? Um, this one took a long time for us to get involved in because it was a lot of training to the mechanics how to use and make sure that the data they were putting in was accurate. Um, but once we got it figured out, it was pretty easy. They all have tablets um, that they enter the information into. Leads over time is our uh, driver applicant leads. Um, so we look at how many leads um, a city gets. Um, and then we look at that city um, and their recruiter and say, how effective is that recruiter? Are they converting the leads? Are the leads that they, the applicants, are the applicants that they convert staying with us? Are the applicants that they convert staying with us and safe drivers? Um, where are we getting the leads? Um, what is the title of the lead that we, um, we put out there? Is, is one is non-emergency medical transport driver a better um, lead source than a taxi driver lead source or chauffeur better than shuttle driver? Um, so we follow all of that and, and, and then you can make more sound decisions of how to promote that job description. And then we look at how long they stayed um, um, with us uh, through that so that that way we can uh, make sure that we do, if, if we see someone constantly falling out off, we can go in and track retention and then say, we need to have a better retention plan in that market. Also, how long does it take to convert that driver from that, that applicant to a, to a driver? A bookings report is just what it is, except that we wanted to go in and manipulate our data a little more. There was some more data we wanted to see so we could tell our drivers, hey, this is the time of day that you should go out and drive. Um, looks like we had a much higher rejection rate or cancellation rate or no vehicle available rate uh, on Sundays at 4 a.m. I think internally we all know that that is a time that we don't have good coverage, um, but the data now supports that. Um, it also, if you have employee drivers, you can say when you're um, doing the leads for that, hey, I need a nighttime driver and I'm really looking for someone on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, because those are times that I don't have great coverage. Um, and then you can also go back and look at where was I a year ago? Do I need to ramp up my recruiting efforts? Because I know in, in November, in November, I have a, um, I start to get really busy and then um, it goes down in December or whatever it is. So we use all of that um, data to determine whether or not we do a big boost on um, recruitment. 
We can also go in and see where completion rates are really high. So if we have something that has a high completion rate, um, we know we need to start marketing to the customer more to get more business. Um, we know if we have a really low completion rate that we need to add, um, add drivers. Um, we can also go in and look and see what, what our uh, street hails versus um, contract um, trips versus any MT trips, um, wheelchair trips, um, any type of data that we wanna pull up, we can kind of look and see what, so that way we can make better sound decisions. Vehicle scores, so we have gone in and scored all of our vehicles so that we can see which type of vehicle is the best uh, for us to purchase. Again, for all of us, I think we know that um, a Toyota Sienna um, usually uh, will have a better transmission than the Dodge Caravan. We know that at 100,000 miles, we're replacing a, a transmission, but we follow that vehicle all the way through and say, here's the cost of the transmission, the labor, the parts, here's what we purchased it for. And this is the amount of dollars we've spent. And then we can score that vehicle and say, Those, this vehicle is a better purchase for me. So maybe I would take more time to invest in that vehicle. Um, also, we will look and see how many, you know, how many um, miles before we need to start looking at replacing certain things. Um, so we know that we need to start stocking up on uh, a certain type of part. Um, or when we're hiring a mechanic, we need to make sure that they have a certain skill set uh, based on the vehicles that we have. Then we've also gone in and we have some contracts that the um, customer wants some deep insight. They wanna know um, on a lot of our contracts, we have a, um, where we have an on-time percentage. Um, so we will build them a report that shows where they can only see the data that we wanna give them of their on-time percentage. We can see how many times did um, Joe Smith uh, book three times, you know, did Joe Smith book four times within one hour, which skewed our on-time percentage. Um, we can look and see um, how many times Joe Smith canceled uh, the week before. So that that way we can go back to the contract and say, hey, maybe Joe Smith isn't um, a good candidate for your program. Um, and so this is something we've done with about uh, five of our our, our contracts and it you know really makes them feel like we care. It eliminates a lot of the back and forth emails, eliminates a ton of paperwork um, and lets them feel like they have some very clear data transparency. So those are all the things, where do you begin? Like how do you start to um, do this? So we, this is a project we started a year ago um, and we've kind of done some of it on our own, but I um, hired our data scientist um, almost exactly a year ago. Um, but one of the places that if you're a small um, fleet, go to the colleges um, that have a data science program and talk to the professor and say, hey, I have a project I'd like your class to work on. They are always looking for um, a project that they can work on as a class together. Um, and there's then no cost to you. They will find things um, that you maybe hadn't thought of. You may go into the college and the professor and say, you know, here are the five things I really think are important. Um, and they'll build those, but maybe they'll find something that you hadn't thought of. And I know with our data scientist, he'd come up with some things that we hadn't looked at um, that made us see some, uh, made us make some business decisions that we hadn't thought about that saved us a ton of money. Um, you can also um, 
right now, you don't really need to have this person in um, your office because most of the data that is available that you're going to have is they're going to use through an API. Um, and they can do that all from home. And that is very lucrative to um, someone that wants to get in the data science field. Um, and they can do it on a short term. So I know like sometimes I'll have a project that I want done and I will use, um, a, I'll go online and look for someone that wants to do a, just a contract um, of, of a concept that I have and, and it's not an employee, a long-term thing. So that's, that's where I would begin if you're not ready to commit to hiring an employee to do this. Um, so the first thing that you really um, have to implement is getting away from paper in your office and use forms for everything that can be exported into an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV or some sort of um, API. So there are a ton out there that are free. Uh, form stack, uh, it says J joy form, it's jot form, jot form, smart sheets, um, any form, Google Forms, any of those forms that you want data on. So if you are looking at um, applicants, put all of your applicants now on a form. If you are looking at um, safety records, um, whenever a, you have an accident, put it on a form so that that way you can track all of this information. Um, the more Excel type spreadsheets that you have, the easier it will be for you to see the data. Um, if, if you have an applicant that comes in, track that applicant through the life, lifespan. So they applied on X date, they were employed on uh, two weeks later, you gave them a 30 day review after, you know, so you can see it all the way through. So you can um, and then, you know, little things like who was their supervisor so that you can track was the supervisor good? Who was the training manager? So you can see, do is this training manager not doing me a service, doing me a disservice, but not training properly? Um, and then to show your analytics, now you have it all on, on, on a spreadsheet or something. Um, <clears throat> Power BI is one that's very popular. It's if you don't know how to use um, Power BI, it's not as easy as something like Zoho. Power BI has a free version and so does Zoho. Um, and what's really cool about Zoho is that you import your spreadsheet and it will pop up and say, do you want us to create a dashboard based on the information that we see? And it'll create one for you with a push of a button. It is not anything that you have to know how to create a dashboard. As long as the data is in there, it'll pull uh, everything for you. So that's one I really recommend using. Um, and it can be casted on a website um, um, for, for you to show your owners or, or whatnot. Um, so that's really all I have on um, where you begin and and how we use data uh, to make better sound decisions. Um, so I would like to then now um, open it up to questions. Natalie, uh, this is John here. <clears throat> that was fantastic. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the, the deep dive that you guys do into data is uh, truly amazing. Uh, we've got a few questions that have come through. Um, and let me try to prioritize these here. Um, Should I stop sharing my screen so that we can go back to the... If, uh, if you, yeah, uh, sure, that'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is the, um, I guess let's let's start with how often do you look at this and, and do you, how often do you um, ask your team to look at this? Okay, so we have a report that goes out daily that's an overview, overview report um, that they look at daily um, that 
you know, just automatically spits out to them. So it shows kind of an overview of some of the things that we think are important um, from a corporate standpoint. Um, now, the depending on on the data, um, it's either updated daily or weekly. Um, so for us, we use three different cashiering platforms for the drivers, um, and not all of them are or have an open data source. So we have to pull those manually, then import them. Um, and that's done weekly. Um, and then some of our stuff, like our where our applicants come in, that's has an open source. So that's that's imported and it's done on the back end. There's not a guy pushing a button. Um, that's done daily. Um, for, for the local operators they have a report that they give us weekly um and it's just some you know we want them to come so that's when they would have to look at the information and then we do a monthly report and we go over we have a monthly meeting with all of our gms that we go over this information monthly well and that um that actually feeds into another question that we had which is so how much of this are you you know because z trip operates in what, almost two two dozen cities across America. So are you, do you, does Z Trip ask that each of its managers in those cities under, like review and understand that data? Or yeah. is it all fed kind of into Kansas City and Kansas City makes a determination of what is needed? No, I mean, I think a manager needs, I mean, you. I think it's better for a manager to manage the business and um, then they know how to operate. So for instance, I was looking at driver balances in Kansas City um, yesterday and I saw it do this. So then it made me question, why are, our, why are your driver balances going up so much? But come to find out there was a cashier that was out um, sick for, four days and just it hadn't been applied. Um, but they they look at it daily and monthly, but this was something that happened before the month. So I was able to um, to see why. And you know, so you want to be able to see those kind of things so you can see if there's some sort of trend before it gets out of hand. But they look at it daily and then monthly. Yeah. They can look at it as much as they want because it's on the website, but yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for, I mean, obviously, like I said, Z Trips is a pretty big, <laughs> very big operation. Um, but for people who have a smaller operation, you know, let's say anywhere from, you know, 10 to 50 cars, mm -hmm. vehicles, what would be the, um, you know, if, if we don't yet, this is the question, if we don't yet have a way to analyze all of the data, what's the number one area where we should start? I would start um, just because I think this issue is across the board and it's my main background is with recruitment um, dashboard. Whether you have independent contractors or whether you have employees, there's a turnover um, right now. And, and so the first thing I would do is, is put it on a form, and then that way you can start to track it and then create some sort of dashboard so that that way you can make be a better recruiter. Because a lot of whatever problems you have as a fleet go away if you have enough employees or independent contractors. So your customer service complaints go away if they have nothing to complain about because their wait time was too long. Your um, if you had your PTO problems go away, um, you don't have to worry about that so much. I mean, I think employee or independent contractor, if you have so many problems go away, if you have the right amount of employees or drivers. Yeah. That's where I would start. Um, and it's an easy one. Um, if you have a recruiter, um, and you think they're doing a good job or the recruiter was an ex driver or the recruiter has been with you for 20 years or is in a, you know, a cousin, 
you know, make sure they're doing their, their part instead of the, you know, how the drivers always used to say, I can't make any money. I can't make any money. And then you look at their rejection rates and they've rejected 80%. Mm. Your recruiter right now, I'm assuming is telling you, I can't get any employees or I can't get any drivers. And maybe it's, some of it is true, but some of it may also be just their, their lack of follow-up. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you had mentioned dashboards just a second ago, but are there, uh, another question we had is, are there, and, and I, I know you, I believe you, you talked about some of these um, dashboards that were systems uh, software that will help you create a free dashboard basically. Right. But um, is the one that you showed that Ztrip uses, are those, were those custom built for Ztrip or are you using off the shelf, like free software? We're using Power BI. Um, okay. There's a cost associated with it. It's a, what, John, it's $10 a month. Okay, yeah. Uh, per user, we only have the one user um, that uses it, um, which is our data scientist. And then he uploads it to a website that is password protected, but then each manager can see their data um, based on that. Um, but before him, Power BI was a little more advanced than uh, I wanted to get involved with. So I used Zoho um, and Zoho has a whole suite of programs. I'm a huge advocate of theirs. They've got a, a recruiting platform. They've got a, a cashier platform and they've got a expense report platform, but they have a Zoho analytics platform where I would copy and paste my data. And it was literally a copy and paste and then it would say, would you like us to create a dashboard for you? And I said, well, yes, I would. And I pushed a button and, and it would uh, create everything I wanted and more. Um, I've got to think that these, when you show these to clients, uh, customers, that they are impressed by the level of detail. And can you speak a little bit about like, how do you use this? data when you're going into a business pitch, a new business pitch, how do you, and how does it help you? And, and like, I mean, yeah, what's been your experience with how it's helped you earn more business? Um, I'll talk about our current clients first. So um, the current clients um, that we built the custom dashboards for um, are our biggest advocates. They, they will get you more business. Um, they will find more business within their own organization um, because you've made it so easy. So if you're working with a hospital or a transit authority and you've made their life easy, I guarantee you're not getting all of their business, especially like a, hosp a hospital. Um, because there's, you know, there's a neonatal division, there's a heart division, there's a cancer division. Um, and they all kind of have different heads of departments. So they've been able to open, um, the people we've worked with have been able to open uh, doors to those because they look at how transparent they are. And it's a level of tr trust that I think it's more than the, the level of trust in the data itself and that they got to see a cool dashboard. Um, so that's been helpful. And then to acquire new business, I'll tell you where it's helped, it's helped for if you need funding, if you need to go to your bank and you need to get a loan, you need to be able to show this is the trajectory we're going um, at. This is why we need the money. This is all of the data we collect and we can see that, that we are going to make money. Um, and this is why we need a vehicle and I need CapEx for 18 vehicles because of this. So I think that's been, more than just a going in to get a client um, that's mm. someone more than like, you know, I'm landing a new, new account. Mm -hmm. um, we do use um, this information for accidents. So if we have um, an accident, we can then take it to the insurance company and um, be able to say to the insurance company that I wanna reduce my rates because of uh, all of these things we've put into place based on the data. And then if the, um, you know, like we were talking about the Z-Trip is 
in many, many different cities mm -hmm. around the country. Um, you know, and, and some of the cities that you operate in, I mean, like, what's the, give me an example of like, what's the size of the smallest fleet that you have? You don't have to name the city, but like, is what would be the smallest fleet? 20 car, 30 car? Um, 15. We have 15, okay. One five. So in that, so in yeah. that 15 car yeah. city, um, how does that operation have enough human resources to input all of this information into the, uh, the to collect the data and put it into the you know so that you get good data so it it's not it's not that much information so if you're collecting data on a 15 car operation you're not onboarding 50 people a, a month like someone that has a 400 car operation you're onboarding one or two. So you're really only collecting two, one or two pieces uh -huh. of information. Um, so it's the scale is really all it is, is it's the same information is just scale um, and how many times you have to do it. Um, yeah. But if you put processes in place uh, to collect the data on a form, um, an online form that can be um, exported into from a spreadsheet, that's where you'll, save the time instead of trying to right so automation is the key yeah so yeah. like your application your applications can be all online on a form yeah um, instead of a piece of paper um we all have a tablet laying around that we can use um to collect the data on put a form on and then you had mentioned um you had mentioned that one of the one of the key things that you have to do in the company to make this work is you have to get rid of paper. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious about how, how did you make that process work? Um, I can only imagine it was probably a, a learning curve. Um, we don't have it completely gone, um, mm -hmm. but you know, there are some people that, that love, love to file. Uh, the, when you, this is where, so again, I had a meeting yesterday and I had a gentleman that just kept saying, his manager kept saying, no, no, no. And I said, maybe you are presenting the data improperly. You can't just walk into to your manager and say, or your owner and say, I want to do this based on a motion. If you walk in and say, I want to do this because I have this set of data for you, um, they will more than likely give you the leeway to go do what you want. So that is what I had to do in the beginning. And only way I could do that was to be able to put it all on a form um, and collect the data that way. And then, and then when someone asks the question about the data, it's very easy for me to look up um, because you can go into a search bar in any spreadsheet and find something fast while your counterpart that has paper um will take three days uh -huh. so when you can um convince people that it's easier to go away from paper um then and make their lives easier then it's uh and an much easier sell right yeah we, i mean and we still have some clients that we would like to you know move away from paper vouchers um you know, because we have the ability to do it all in a tablet and sign on a tablet, but they, you know, we, so we still have some paper that we can't get rid of. It's, I think it's hard for any business uh, yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, and absent like shutting off the printer and just saying that you can't print anything. It's, um, it's a, it, it's a hard habit to break for it sure. Is. It is. Yeah. Um, you make someone's life e easier though. Um, yeah i'm an iphone right. person or a mac person once you go from a pc to a mac you're like why did i ever why did i ever struggle or an, I, or an android to an iphone um it the pain is there um but once you get through it um it's a usually you're happier with the change yeah um well, does anybody have any other questions uh, for Natalie before we uh, before we wrap it up? Or Natalie, do you have any um, uh, any final thoughts on 
tips and advice on, on how to get started on using metrics? No, I mean, again, I would go to the colleges. Um, I mean, you could even go to the high school um, and, and talk to an analytics professor or, or teacher or, or some high schools have some analytics uh, and some computer um, classes and ask them if you can be um, a part of their, their school project. Um, and they will teach you, they will learn, they will ask the questions, and then you will have an amazing uh, product afterwards. And it won't cost you a dime other than some time, but that time that you will save in the long run um, will outweigh the, the, the time you had to spend to get to there. So that's, I mean, if you can do anything after this call, get on an email and, and reach out to some, some professors. I think that's excellent advice. Um, and your and and your data scientist is is that's a full time position that somebody. It's a full time position, yeah. yeah. Now at this point, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, and he, I mean, and it's a young student. It wasn't someone that had years of experience. This was his uh, first real job. So. And they don't have to have transportation experience, right? No, he has zero transportation right. experience. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Right. I think that's I think that's terrific, uh, terrific advice. Um, well, I think with that we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up unless anybody raises their hand. Um, speak now, forever hold your peace. But um, I want to thank everybody for joining us, um, and 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 of course I want to thank Natalie for a really terrific presentation. Natalie, once again, you've just shown that you are, <laughs> uh, I think, the hands down expert on how to use data and numbers to drive business decisions. And it's it's really fascinating to, uh, to see how ZTRIP uses it. Um, so a big thank you to you and a big thank you to all of our participants. Uh, if anybody has any follow-up questions, please feel free to email us at info at thetransportationalliance.org. And uh, last but not least, just a few important things to note um, for any Massachusetts operators and drivers, we have free money available in the form of scholarships for both fleets and drivers. Uh, any Massachusetts fleet can take advantage of this for a number of courses from safety trainings to non-emergency medical transportation credentialing. Go to ridelocalma.org and then click on for fleet operators or for drivers and you can find all the information there. But I would urge you to act fast because when the money runs out, the money runs out and there'll be no more scholarships. So. Um, this is really the time to act right now. Uh, and then also mark your calendars because TTA is headed back to Las Vegas this fall uh, in less than, a, uh, in actually one month from now uh, for its annual convention, Mobilize 2021. That is happening on October 14th to 17th at the Paris Las Vegas Resort and Casino. Um, so please visit uh, the, tra uh, the transportationalliance.org for all the information there. You can book everything all in, on one, uh, in one portal, your hotel room, your registration, everything that you need is all right there. And we hope to see you um, in Vegas in uh, one month from today. And with that, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Natalie, for a fantastic presentation. Um, I hope everybody uh, stays safe and we'll see you soon.